Good morning. Happy prayer day. It's been a while. It's been some crazy days. You can see I'm exhausted and tired, but God has been amazingly good. And this morning, I'm going to take a little detour from what we've been talking about. And I'm going to talk about um, something that's been on my mind for the last few days. And I, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, God, for waking us up another morning in the land of the living. As we come to our day of prayer, Lord, we just want to seek you, God. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. And thank you, God, for um, loving us immensely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I have been, the song has been in my mind for um, a, a couple of mornings. And um, it's one of my favorite KG songs. And um, the last time <laughs> someone used a song, a secular song in, in worship, I mean, he's done it a few times and I'm so happy to hear his message every time he preaches at this particular place. And this time he started his sermon with the song and it brought chaos in church. I mean, I mean, not maybe really in the church audience, they might be thinking they're not saying it, but in the chat, people were just blowing up the chat. There's one particular person who said she was livid because and I'm like, can we just focus and see where it's going with this and see it is a message to be led? And the funny thing about it is oftentimes we, and we're still talking about, you know, our personal development and personal devotion and I mean, having a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, but I'm just veering off topic a little bit this morning. And we can miss the message because it doesn't come the way we want it. But even in every message, and I find it quite um, hypocritical that we find it okay to sing certain songs at home, but if the songs we're singing is so dire that they cannot be used on in, a, in an illustration that we ought not to be singing them then. And even so, in the, in the name of relevancy, sometimes preachers use some of his songs. Some of his songs, but be careful that we use them. But I had to laugh because I could see where he was going eventually with the song, but this person could not see it that particular morning. But this morning, I want to use a song and such one of those such songs as my interlude. And the song is The Gambler. And so, you know, I've been going through a few things. And as I reflect on um, what's been going on, I've, it's just been in my head, Ed, you have to know when to fool them, know when to hold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. There's so many of us in our lives, you know, we're on a train, we're in a train of life and, and we are bound for nowhere. You know, as a matter of fact, we feel like we're heading nowhere in our walk with God and we feel stuck. We feel like we're just going around in circles and cycles. And for some of us, it's just this continuity of things that's happening in our lives that's give us to this place where we feel like we're heading nowhere. And we met up with the different gamblers of life. And there's one gambler that we need to meet and that's Jesus Christ. He gave up his everything for us and he came here. As in the word of the song, he became the gambler for us. He became the, the, the substitute for us. He, he gave up his privileges and his right to be, to be um, fully, um, he gave up his um to get on this human body, so to speak. Um, um, so he was fully God and fully man, so he could be like us, so he could give us the example that we don't have to go around like in a nowhere ship. We can follow his example and know that there is hope in our lives this morning. So we took turn and we're staring out this this business of our lives, these darkness, these windows we find ourselves. And I like these two passengers on the train. Many of us find ourselves into a rough situation where we don't know where we're going. And as I, I found myself in a situation where I had so many, I said, God, we are here again. I said, why are there these? And as I looked to my life, looked to my family history and everything, I couldn't understand and make sense of my situation. Why this constant spiral? Why am I in this going around these same examples in my life? I said, God, what is it I'm not learning? And I keep asking the same question and heading nowhere with this answer. And while I sit wrestling with the question, uh, this childhood song that I really love comes to mind. It says, you don't have to let the bird fly over your head. And you can't stop the birds from flying over you, your head, but you don't have to make them build a nest in your head. And I really love that song. And this is a pretty powerful song because oftentimes as Christian, we believe that we have to make people make nests in our heads. We don't have to. And while I was there, I'm um, wrestling with wrestling with God, what's going on and what was happening and everything just falling apart. I called seven different persons. And in the last few months, I, mean, I found myself in some sticky situation. And you know, the funny thing about it, my mom always said, you know, when if you really know who your friends are, just lie dead at the roadside and just see what they do and how they treat you. And you know exactly uh, um, who your friends are, just pretend to be dead. And you know how they'll treat you in real situation. And the fact of the matter is, you know, um, I, I called about seven different people and the same response. And it, it wasn't like, I have no problem with someone saying they can't, they 
say no or that is just the way they treat you they ignore you as if they you watch them look at your message or just delete it and not even look at it or respond to you and it can be and I, I was feeling a bit disturbed and I'm like god I don't want this type of behavior I, I don't have to take this treatment I don't have to be the victim I don't have to be disrespected we can make excuses we call who we want to call but we ignore who we want to ignore and that's the reality of life we treat people as if they're a trash in the bin and I chose that I wasn't going to be a trash in the bin that morning I said god I don't have to be treated this way I don't treat people this way and I'm going to respect myself and not allow myself to be treated I know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable with us speaking this firm and frank but we can choose whether we're going to be the victim or not I don't treat people this way and I didn't want to be treated this way I'm going to love me enough that I'm not going to let you put me down this way and so as I wrestled with a question that morning and I as I spoke to the Lord about I said God why is this happening why does why do several of your children think I your child should be treated this way if you, if you made an appointment with me and you think you can't make the appointment with me, you simply have to call or text and say, hey, I something come up and I can't make it. I don't even need an explanation, but it's an acknowledgement that you made a plan with me and you didn't turn up or acknowledge it. I find it quite disrespectful. And, you know, um, the justification of such behavior is just unacceptable. And I, I reach a point where I don't need that type of behavior. Honesty is a part of transparency. You know, God, God is quite transparent with us and that's God's children we are really nasty behaving towards each other and that's the reality and I decided and as I spoke to the Lord about why that was happening and why in the short span of time seven of his children did that to me and I was quite disturbed about it and the Lord gave me this revelation while I was on that flight he gave me this he said to me you know um you know what Claudia there are too many people in your life that you make priority you care about them and treat them with priority but you're not even on their list and that for me was a, a heart opening moment for me, a, a heart warming moment that God doesn't want you. You got to know when to fold people in your life. There are people and relationships in your life that are taking precedence that are blocking God's blessing in your life. And you don't, because you don't know when to walk away. You don't know when to, to run. You don't know when to fold them. And you're holding on to uh, unhealthy behaviors. You're holding on to unhealthy friendships. And the song just came into my mind. Uh, and it's been on my mind for a few days because I had to let go of certain things. And people were telling me, oh, no, don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Careful you take advice from too. Make sure what you're doing is, and I'm seeking God and resting God. Is this what you want me to do? Do you want me to let go and walk away? And as I walked away on, on Monday and I was, you know, I didn't have enough time to say goodbye to as I wanted to. And as I was walking away, you know, the song came into my mind again. You have to know when to hold them. You have to know when to fool them. You have to know when to walk away and know when to run. There are many things in our lives. There are many past habits in our lives. And, and we're doing things the same old way and expect a different change. A meta to madness in our lives, in our spirituality. We're holding on to past blessings that God has given us when he has new mercies and new experiences and new encounters in our lives. And like this gambler, many of us are staring in the bleak windows of our life, the continuity and the spirals of our experience. We're overwhelmed with the helplessness and the spiritual decadence and boredom that we find ourselves in and inactivity and the, and the worldlessness in our churches. And, and we were not feeling fulfilled. And like this gamble, I have an unseen gambler on my flight and, and on my journey Thursday morning. And, and, and on Monday morning, I had uh, on my train on, on Monday, I had this unseen um, gambler who was there encouraging me. Why specializing, you know, God specializes in in, in, in being there in our lives, even though we can't see him, we can know. And, and you know, he specializes in reading faces like the song, the gambler in the song. And as I, I reflect on the words of the song, as I sit there reflecting and looking out through the windows of that train, I reflected on how God, we, oh, I, I get paid to read faces and people's behaviors and their actions and their unsaid words and things they didn't say. And I, and, and I, 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 I recognize that I serve a God who, who knows my facial expression. He reads my facial expression and he always gets it right. He knows what we're going through. He's not distant from what our situation. And he recognized that I was about to be aced out. He recognized that I was being aced out. And he said to me, hey, know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. He's talking to you this morning. You are aced out. The reality is being told. Every Christian know this. The secret to surviving is making God first in our life. Is seeking him in all of our decision making. And we got to know when to hold them and when to walk away. And we got to know that we have a need for for Christ in our lives, and he's the center of our lives. And that is the secret of our survival. The Holy Spirit is given to us so we can seek him for guidance and seek him when we can't cope and ask his strength and to hold on to his promises and to pray feverishly and to ask God for guidance. Jesus is the only way. He's a, you know, as, as everything falls apart this weekend, 
God showed up in some miraculous ways in my life. And, you know, while I was standing there in that line, I didn't know what, what, what bus to take and, and where to go and what stuff to get off because I needed to buy a ticket in uh, for the coach. So and, and it was train strike and I was like, which train was working? And I'm trying to quickly decide. And the, 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 the coach to Israel had already left and the next one is in three hours. And, and there's so many people, about 16 people came in front of me, if not more. And God got my attention because when I got on that coach that morning, um, at night, uh, and, and Thursday night, when I got on the coach, um, it was that the coach was coming at 11.30. And when the coach came, it can only hold, so I heard someone say it can only hold 60 people. When I look in the line, it was so long and winding. I wonder where I was. But it didn't hit me then is when I got to the top of the line and it was my turn to go through the door. The guy moved towards me. And as I stepped through, he drew the line. God was telling me it was okay, that he's got me. God was telling me that in spite of all that was going on in my life, that he was there. When I got on the bus, there were two reserved seats on the coach. And I was the last person allowed to get on the coach. That was like a, a, a mind, um, a hoo moment for me. I in my chaos right there with everything going off and people acing me out. And, and, and it was the end of my ace moment. Didn't know what card to play and what direction to go. God was reminding me that he was right there with me. And that just changed my perspective of all situation, all that had happened, all the disappointment, all the, the, the dejection and rejection, of, all the ignoring and, and the treatment I was receiving and, and, and all the things that was happening to me it was, didn't make sense anymore, didn't matter to me anymore. A, a light bulb, a praise moment just happened because I recognized that God had my back. I didn't know where I was going to get off if I was going to catch that last train. I didn't know. But for that moment, God just got my attention. Hey, I ma you made it on the bus. I got you on the bus. And then while we were there and people were getting their seats, that two reserve seat didn't show up, so they let two more passengers on. But the point God was, God was getting my attention and I got it. And that was significant. God was saying to me, hey, things aren't working out the way you want them to, but I'm still here. I've got you. I've got you. So I sat in the seat and I, I texted in our sister's chat and I, I praised God for that moment. And my whole perspective changed. And my friend was there texting me and he was like, oh, what's going to happen? What's your plan? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I really know what my plan is. Uh, it's bus strike. I'm like, God, when I look at the number of stops, I'm like, God, am I going to make it to the last train? I tried before getting on the bus to do what's normal. Okay, God, I'm tired. I'm going to take a Uber. My app won't load. I'm like, God, I can't afford a regular taxi. Hotels are expensive. What am I going to do? I'm tired, exhausted. The train had delayed, the plane had delayed. But God reminded me, hey, I'm here. I'm here amidst all the chaos, amidst all the uncertainty. I am right here. Let it go. Let it go. Just walk away. Just let, just let me take hold of everything. And as if that was enough, you know, after the, the bus went off and I was watching a number of stops, I'm like, God, the trains normally stop 11, the underground stop 11 something. I'm like, God, am I going to make it? When I count the number of stops I had there, when we got to Golden Screen, and the next two stops, I'm like, God, am I going to make this train? Am I going to make this train? And as I keep going, and I keep going, and I counted the number of minutes to the stop and, and everything, and I'm like, Lord, um, if the driver stop at the next stop, I'm so close to Finch Central, but am I going to make the train? The when I, I was there on the phone talking to someone, and that the driver said, Finch Central, I'm like, what? Finch Central? Let me get off this bus. I jump off the coach and I said to the driver, where's the station? I didn't have time to even look. He said, right down there. I run across this, this, the underpass and I was hurry up to get to the station. When I got to the station, there were two bus train on the station. I was a little confused at first because I said, oh, Jubilee Line comes here too. But it's taking me to Wembley a bit farther, further out. I wanted to get to Harrow on the Hill. The both trains were on there, the two last trains on those lines. And they were both closing at the same time. As I stepped on the train, the doors closed. God had provided. Not only that, then it hit me again. I'm God did not allow the bus to stop at the previous stop. The bus drove past. Had it stopped at that stop, I would have missed my last train. Then when I didn't know what was going to happen, a little bit anxious, trusting God made that trusting him. And by that time, my friend could ask me so much questions. I was irritated. I'm like, look, it's going to be okay. And I said to him, I need to get off this phone. I need to focus and get where I'm going. You're asking me questions. You're going to meet me halfway. And it's so funny because while I was there fighting and wrestling with that, all of that, and you know, I was like, I just responded to him. 
hey, whatever happened when I get there, it's going to be okay. Whether there's no train or no train, I'm going to get home. Whatever time I get home, I'm going to get home. It's going to be okay. That was on the Holy Spirit speaking to me. It was Holy Spirit assuring me of God's presence. And that and I watched God last minute after last minute comes into my life. And while I was on the train and I called out the person and said, well, I, I'm on the train. Or where are you? I'm on the train. I said, and then the person said, you know, I couldn't go home and sleep in my bed. So I decided I'm going to come and meet you at the train station. And this person had no intention of coming to pick me up. But God placed in their hearts. I mean, uncomfortable that, hey, how can you go to bed? Keep asking her what her plan is. I know that she's thrown it in the middle of nowhere. I didn't know that at the time. And I was wondering what changed his mind because he had no intention of coming to meet me or pick me up. None. He just kept asking, what's your plan? Or, or keep me posted. And I'm like, I don't have time for this right now. I really just want to focus and try to get to the location. I knew that the train station was going to close soon, but they had to let the train through anyway. When I got to Harron Hill and I recognized that this was really the last train, it hit me how God has just come in the last minute of my life and my situation. Amidst all the chaos and the darkness and not knowing and the extra cost that it cost me, God showed up again in my life at the last minute just reassure me, hey, I know it's tough. I know it's hard. I'm not moving this problem, but I am with you. As I reflected, as I get down the train station, just barely getting through the gate for the station to be closed, I was in a moment of praise, too tired to even ex exhale my praise. Then I saw the person pulling up and said, and I was calling the person and said, I'm here. And they said, I, I said, is that the blue card? I said, yes. And I went over and the person was talking to me. But, you know, and even when I was coming back on the train and I was, I, I had one hour and 10 minutes, it says, to catch my train. I wanted to use the bathroom so badly and I had under an hour to be on that central light train on the ground to get to King's Cross to get my bus on Monday. Here I was in the same situation again. It cost me a lot of money to get what I was done. To get, I couldn't get everything done, but to get where I got. But God was in it. And I saw his hand. I knew he was with me. He sent help from online places. God was with me and I give him thanks and praise. It wasn't all smooth to say my hands are corned up with tearing papers and doing lifting stuff. But God was with me and that's the important thing. He gave me new perspective to all the problems I was having. And Monday was no exception. I got on the central line train and um, I, I got to King's Cross and I had like, um, before I got to, when I got to Victoria, I'm like, Lord, I, I have two bags. There was no, no, no elevator in sight. And I'm like, God, I have to pull these bags up the stairs and they were heavy. And this guy just came in, I was trying to figure out what to do. And I'm like, God, I have under 12 minutes to change train and to catch my 2 p.m. train. Huh? And I keep saying on the train, God, you got to stall this train. You've got to stop this train because I can't get home later than this. And I'm exhausted to be passed out. And when I get through all of that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking time to share this testimony with you this morning because God is so good. I mean, it's all of our chaos. And when we think that life is giving us some raw deals and we're blanked out, just let go some of the baggages, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to turn to God and recognize him is all and everything you need. And when I got to the station, you know, and I was going up the stairs, this guy said, can I help you one of those bags? And he looked at that, he took the smaller one. I'm like, dang, I wish he had taken the bigger one. And as I was struggling to lift the bigger one, I said, thank you. That I said, you know what? He has won. Get the next one up quickly. And I was struggling to lift up the next, let the, just the next rung up the stairs. And, and this guy came and said, I'll take that one. And he took me up the stairs and, and, he, and he kept looking back and he says, are we going to go down the stairs? And I said, I don't know, I have no clue. And, and then he walked out and he said, no, 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 there's no stairs, come on up. And I, and I ran down and I catch uh, the next train. I had to wait for the train a few minutes. And when I got to King's Cross, I couldn't even get into my email to, to get my ticket out. And I'm like, well, it's two minutes before the train go. And this guy was talking to a group of person and this that guy came over and he says to me, hey, you look anxious and overwhelmed and disturbed. He said, hey, promise me something. Stop stressing. Take it easy. I said, my ticket is in my email and I need to catch that train. Where's the train to Scotland? And he was like, hey, stop. I'm going to get you through. Take it easy. And I was still a little flustered and I was happy. And, you know, he came over to rescue me. He took me to the gate and he he opened the gate for me. I didn't have to swipe my ticket. God came through again for me. And when I, he says, go, just take it easy. You're going to make it. And even then I was, I saw some people start, I was walking and I saw some people start running towards the train. And I'm like, I'm not going to miss this train after all of this. Failing to just trust God wholeheartedly again. The guy said it's going to be okay. He assured me I was going to make the train. I saw people going and I, was, I started running a little bit with the two bags. And then I said, hey, trust God. He'll make it. I got on that train. God is amazing. It doesn't always work that way. I didn't know there was a next train. Whatever happened, I would have to just simply miss work the next day if I missed the train. But at that point in time, it didn't really matter. 
because God had reminded me that he was right there. You got to know that God is there when every hand in your life doesn't seem like a winning hand. And one word of the song I want to leave you, it says, every gambler know that the hand they have is a winning hand. The same hand is a losing hand. But you got to hope that God is in it, in the middle of all of your situation. How you play that hand determines whether you win or lose. If God is not in it, that determines whether you win or lose. I hope you gained something from this devotional this morning. But one thing I recognized as I reflect was, you know, it had nothing to do with me. I didn't even trust wholeheartedly in some of the situations and circumstances. But praying every morning and seeking the Holy Spirit has made a difference in my life. Personal revival is important. Seeking the Holy Spirit and knowing and when recognizing and pausing in my every element of the way, I started to pause and look for little blessings in what was going on in the chaos of my life. That made a difference to my circumstances and my experiences this weekend. I recognized that there were more things going on wrong than things were going on right. There were more disappointments and more setbacks. But God sent help from unusual places. Yes, it cost me a skip for 200 and odd pounds. Yes, it cost me over another 200 and odd 300 pounds to, to get help. But God showed up. God showed up in ways that only he could show up and gave me peace. Know that God is in it with you. And when he's in charge of your game, there's always a win-win situation. If you play that game by your hand, yes, you can win or you lose. But even if you lose at this, God, apparently lose with God, you never a loser. You're always a winner. So know the things in your life, but to let go, let go of the past things that have kept you. Focus on your present relationship with God, because you can't live on your past graces and your past moment. Know what to fall in your life. Let go of the toxic friendship and relationship. Don't make people priority in your life that those it doesn't even have you existing on their list. Don't accept. Faulty negative behavior and excuses people make in our life. We accept too much excuses and they put you down and make you even feel worse. But always remember whatever happened in your life that God is with you. Even when it doesn't look the way you want it to, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. And make God the game changer in your game. And the advice he gives you for sure, you will get to your destination a winner. Have a blessed day. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. I know I spent a little time sharing this testimony, but I would be amiss if I didn't share this testimony of how you've been working in my life on this journey to personal revival. Father, I thank you, God, that even in the chaotic moments of our lives, Lord, when nothing makes sense, God, that you, if we pause only long enough, Lord, if we focus on the problems and the negative things in our lives, Lord, we will miss the little blessings that you have. And because I stop to see the little blessings and praise you for the little blessings, Lord, and that oh, I'm light bulb moment, Lord, I was able to see more blessings than you showing up in the difficult moments of our lives so father open our eyes today lord show those who are overwhelmed today that show them a little glimpse of hope and may they hold on to you and recognize you of lord of their lives irrespective of our situation and our circumstances in jesus name we pray amen have a blessed day bless bless